He was losing interest in economics. I didn't think it dealt with important problems, at least those that were important to me. And I thought of going into sociology, in fact, tried it, found it too difficult. Uh, that's literally true. I, I just found uh, it's too hard to go into. So I decided to continue with economics. I went to University of Chicago and um, encountering Milton Friedman had enormous influence on my development because he, he, he and some others, but he was clearly the number one influence on me, showed me that economics had, can be very powerful in interpreting the world about us, important problems of all types. So that uh, rejuvenated me. Uh, I remember my first day in, in my class in price theory with Milton Friedman. Uh, I had come from Princeton. I, I had already had a couple of articles I was preparing for publication. You know, we did extremely well at Princeton. And so I thought I knew some economics. And uh, first day, very first day, lecture to class, about 50 minutes into class, he asked a question. I raised my hand gave an answer. As I was giving my answer, I was uneasy about it. Well, he quickly <laughs> showed me why. Uh, he, gave, he showed me, he said, first of all, he said to me, that's no answer. That's just restating the question in other words. And then he went on to give the answer. I sat down at that time. So that was a pretty tough response on his part, but it was really a, a, one of the best things that ever happened to me. I, I sat down and I remember going home and thinking, uh, Gary, you have a lot more economics to learn. So it was a great lesson for me. But Milton was a very tough teacher. Uh, Bob Lucas tells a story. Uh, you know, Bob Lucas, an outstanding economist, Nobel Prize winner. He, he, a few years after I did, he took the same class. At the end of the class, he bumped into Milton Friedman. Milton Friedman oh, I said, "You did. You got the best. You did the best in this class." And then he sees his grade; it's a B plus. So he goes to Milton Friedman. He thinks oh, he made a mistake. I was, you said I was the best in the class. He said you were, but it wasn't a very good class. <laughs> markets are a way of bringing people together. And the, how markets operate is crucial for understanding a lot of phenomena. Political market, market for oil, market for education, market for discrimination, a lot of different areas. So the interaction between the incentives of individuals and their role of markets, I think, is, is the revolution that Chicago brought. It's, it had a great influence on policy. It explains why centralized gov uh, you know, government-run economies were so unsuccessful. Why people in Eastern Europe and elsewhere in the world think of the Chicago School, Milton Friedman, and other members of the Chicago School as really their heroes, right? That they, they made it possible for these societies to become free and to give the ideas that enable them to take their terribly run societies and begin to turn them around, whether it's China doing it now, or Eastern Europe, even Russia. They're following Chicago-type principles. So that was a revolution. Uh, George Will once wrote a, a, an article, and I just saw George Will at some Bradley uh, function, and I said to him, I remember that article. What was the article called? I said it was Cold War is Over and the University of Chicago won it. And he was referring to people like Friedman and Stigler and the like. Um, now, it's a little exaggeration, but they were certainly important players in this Cold War. And, and, you know, not out there fighting and not out there with arms, but with intellectual uh, material showing the bankruptness of uh, centralized planning.